Firms in the United States can take many forms, depending on the needs of the shareholders. Each of these organizational forms has pros and cons for the shareholders. This is why some firms in industries like financial services or real estate often are not publicly traded C corporations. Let's talk about each of these forms in turn. The sole proprietorship is the simplest form of business. It's an organization with one shareholder who usually is often the manager of the organization. Sole proprietorships are often the smallest businesses and are used by individuals who sell products that are unlikely to break and cause the sole proprietor legal liability. Sole proprietorships allow the owner to keep all of their profits from the business, but that income is taxed at the individual's tax rate. In other words, there is no corporate tax assessed on the profits of a sole proprietorship. One of the biggest benefits of the sole proprietorship is how easy it is to start. In Indiana, if you want to sell food or drink as a sole proprietor with one employee, all you need to do is request an employee identification number, file a BT-1 form, and register your proprietorship with the state to ensure that you are paying sales taxes. Now, there are a couple of drawbacks to the sole proprietorship. First, this form of business ends as soon as the owner passes away. Second, the value of the firm is limited by how much equity capital the proprietor can invest in the company and by how much the proprietor can borrow. This type of organization cannot issue new shares to other individuals to raise money, so it has limited growth prospects. The biggest drawback to the sole proprietorship is the unlimited liability for the proprietor. In other words, they can lose far more than they invested in the organization if the organization is sued by a customer. Next. We have partnerships. There are two types of partnerships, general and limited. In a general partnership, all partners share in gains and losses and all have unlimited liability for all partnership debts. Written agreements are essential due to the unlimited liability. In a limited partnership, one or more general partners run the business and have unlimited liability. A limited partner's liability is limited to his or her contribution to the partnership but he or she cannot help in running the business. Limited partners cannot be actively involved in the business or else they may be deemed general partners. Note that unlimited liability applies to all partners in a general partnership, but only to the general partner or partners in a limited partnership. Like sole proprietorships, partnerships are easy to start and income is taxed at the personal level rather than at the partnership level. However, when one individual dies, the partnership is dissolved. It is extremely difficult to transfer ownership in a partnership. Sole proprietorships and partnerships are usually associated with the smallest businesses in the U.S. Now let's talk about the ownership structure of some of the larger businesses. C corporations account for the largest volume of business in dollar terms in the United States. They are considered a legal person distinct from owners and are residents of a state, which means that, as of 2010, they have the right to free speech and the right to make campaign contributions. There are many reasons why the corporate form of business is so popular for large firms. First, they have limited liability, which means that as long as an individual associated with the firm has not committed a crime, the most they can lose from an investment in a corporation is exactly what they invested. Corporations also have unlimited lifetimes, some corporations in the United States are over 100 years old. Corporations can issue new shares of stock or equity to new shareholders to raise cash. So this form of business can grow much faster than a partnership or a sole proprietorship. Selling shares is also very easy since the stock of many corporations trades on a stock exchange. The corporate form of business also frequently leads to a separation of ownership and management. This means that the shareholders often hire an experienced manager to run the corporation. There are many benefits of this, since it's likely the shareholders or owners of the corporation do not have the expertise to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. However, there is a drawback to separating ownership and management, since the management may not be incentivized to maximize the value of the shareholders' equity. This problem is referred to as an agency problem and is one of the most important topics in all of finance, since shareholders are still trying to find ways to properly incentivize experienced management to always work hard and maximize the value of the firm's equity. Nowadays, 
most CEOs are compensated at least partially with shares of stock or stock options, whose value increases as the firm becomes more valuable. Another problem with the corporate form is double taxation. This means that profit is first taxed at the corporate level and then again at the individual level as shareholders receive dividends or sell their shares for a profit, otherwise known as a capital gain. Both the dividends and the capital gains of most U.S. shareholders are taxed. There are two different types of corporations in the United States, C-corporations, or C-corps for short, and S-corps. The largest corporations are C-corps, since they can have an unlimited number of shareholders. Everything I just mentioned on the previous slide applies to C-corporations. S-corporations are a bit different. They are only allowed to have 100 shareholders and one class of stock, meaning that all of the shares of the stock have the same voting rights and represent the same percentage of the total equity of the company. The primary benefit of S-Corps is that profit is only taxed at the individual level when the firm pays a dividend or the shareholders sell their shares for a capital gain. There are fewer requirements on the accounting practices of these firms as well. There are some very large S-Corporations in existence today, but they are comparatively smaller than C-Corps on average. LLCs and LLPs are recent developments with the first ones showing up in the late 1970s. LLCs offer limited liability to their owner, act as pass-through entities for taxation purposes like sole proprietorships and partnerships. LLCs offer limited liability to their owners and act as pass-through entities for taxation purposes just like sole proprietorships and partnerships. The requirements for starting an LLC are different in every state. Like most firms, LLCs are frequently incorporated in Delaware due to the long case history in that state. Limited liability partnerships, or LLPs, also exist. LLPs are taxed as partnerships, which means that the profits and losses from the business must be reported on the partner's personal income taxes. LLCs can have only one member, whereas an LLP must have at least two members. A single member LLC may be taxed as a sole proprietorship or a corporation, 